What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with T-Mobile Rebel 5G pros and cons. So let's get started. So these are my pros and cons and best and worst features about the T-Mobile Rebel 5G. First, we'll go over my top five pros and then we'll go over my top five cons. The first thing that I really like about this phone is the display. So with this device, we are getting a 6.53 inch display. The display itself is IPS LCD, but it is 1080p. We're getting a PPI of 395 and a 19 and a half by nine aspect ratio. Now, one of the benefits of that aspect ratio is that the display on here is more narrow and tall allowing you to see more of your social media feed in one frame or more of a website as well. So there's definitely a lot of benefits when it comes to having a taller display if you're trying to use your phone for content consumption. In addition to that, despite the display being LCD, it does feature very good colors and decent viewing angles as well. So I think things look very sharp on here and it makes this phone feel like a very premium handset. So I don't have any complaints. The second pro is the cameras. So with the Revel 5G, we are getting a 16 megapixel front facing camera. And then on the rear, we're getting a triple camera setup with a 48 megapixel main camera, an eight megapixel ultra wide angle camera, and a five megapixel macro camera. But here's how things look with the regular camera on the device. Then from here, we can also switch over to the ultra wide angle camera to fit a lot more content into the frame. And then by going over to the more tab, we have a bunch of different options, including Super Macro. So with Super Macro, we can get extremely close up and have things be in really good detail. Then from here, we can go over to Portrait Mode. We can also use Portrait Mode for the front-facing camera as well. So we get those nice blurred out backgrounds. So in general, the cameras on the Revel 5G are certainly very capable and you can definitely take some very nice looking pictures. So I'm certainly a big fan of that. Now with the T-Mobile Revel 5G, we're getting 128 gigabytes of internal storage. And if that's not enough for you, we also get micro SD card expansion. So that's definitely a really nice thing to see. And what's interesting too, is that the base model iPhone 11 that sells for $699 still has 64 gigabytes of storage. So that's pretty amazing that this phone is a fraction of the price of the iPhone 11, but we're getting double the amount of storage here. The fourth pro about the T-Mobile Revel 5G is the RAM and processor. So with this phone, we're getting six gigabytes of RAM and we're getting the Qualcomm Snapdragon 765. So those specs certainly make this phone an upper mid-ranger, but in reality, this phone will definitely be able to get the job done for the majority of people out there. Whether you're creating content, doing some light video editing, doing gaming as well, or if you just wanna sit back, relax, watch some videos, go on social media, this phone will get the job done for you. Now, of course, there are better processors out there, but you're gonna be paying $1,000 or more to get that processor. So considering that you can get the Revel 5G for a very affordable price, and then in addition to that, get very good performance, that certainly makes this phone a winner. And then finally, the last pro, but there are many others, I just want to give you my top five for this video, is that we're getting a very beefy battery. So the battery with this phone is 4,500 milliamp hours. We're getting reverse charging as well, which is pretty interesting. So if you get a USB-C OTG cable, you can plug one end into this phone and then connect the other end to another phone or another electronic device. And this phone's battery will power that device. So that's pretty interesting. Now that's a feature that I feel like not too many people are really gonna use in real life, but it still is a unique feature that you can't find with too many other phones, especially in this price range. But now that we've gone over the top five pros about the phone, let's now cover the top five cons. Now I do wanna be clear here. This phone is a good phone. In fact, it was very tough for me to come up with a list of cons about it. But despite that, I still wanna give you my top five weaker points about this phone, maybe things that could be improved for the next generation. So let's get into it. The first one definitely has to be the bezels. So the bezels are certainly not the worst I've ever seen, but the bottom bezel is pretty large. I would have liked to see this shrunken down a little bit to kind of mimic the form factor of the Google Pixel 4a, for example. 
And then even the bezel on the top and even the side is a little bit bigger compared to some of the competition, including the Galaxy A51 5G. So this form factor is not a deal breaker, but I feel like if they would have slimmed things down a little bit, the phone would have looked even more high end. The second con about this phone is the build materials. Now the phone does feel high quality and it is nice and durable, so that's awesome. But besides the display, the phone is completely made out of plastic. So we have a plastic band running around the sides of the phone, and then the material on the back is plastic as well. So if you like plastic, then I suppose you'll really like this about the phone. But if you are looking for a more premium feeling device, then you might want to spend more money and get something else. The third con with this phone is the rear mounted fingerprint sensor. So the good news is that the fingerprint sensor is nice and fast and accurate. And also we do get face unlock, which is a good thing to see as well. But other competitors, like the Galaxy A51 5G, feature in-display fingerprint sensors, which is definitely a more modern technology. And having a feature like that with a phone like the A51 5G, or even the regular A51, does make things feel a bit more premium. But from a function standpoint, the fingerprint sensor does still function perfectly fine on the back of the phone. So if you don't mind that, then it is here for you. My fourth con, and I know some people might say this is kind of nitpicking, is that we have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the top of the phone. So other devices like the A51 5G have it on the bottom. And that's really the place that I prefer the jack to be at. And the reason for that is because if you have your headphones plugged in, and you want to put the phone in your pocket, you have to awkwardly put the phone in bottom first so that the wire is able to stick up. And if you're holding the phone like this, that's just kind of an awkward thing to do. And if you're like me, when you put your phone in your pocket, usually you go head first because you're already holding the phone this way. So you go in this motion. But if you have the headphones plugged in, then you can't really do that. It's pretty awkward and not nearly as convenient. So I know it's a little thing, but it does make a big difference for the usability for many people. And then finally, the last con about the Revel 5G is that there's no wireless charging. Now there are many people out there that don't use wireless charging at all, even with phones that support it. And I understand that, but with the way things are heading, we're getting more and more cars where the center console features a wireless charger. We're getting desks and tables with built-in wireless chargers as well. And I really feel like wireless charging, at least to some extent, is the future. So having wireless charging with this phone would have been a good thing. And if for some reason you happen to damage the charging port, then having wireless charging is a good backup plan. So I feel like a feature like wireless charging wouldn't be too much to incorporate, at least price-wise, into this phone but they did choose not to include it. Now, before we end the video, there are a few other benefits about this phone that I do want to point out and I do want to recognize. The first one is that we are getting 4K video recording with this phone, which is definitely a nice thing to see. I remember it wasn't too long ago that 4K video recording was something that you only got with very expensive flagship phones, but now a premium mid-ranger like the Revel 5G also gives us 4K video recording. Another perk with this phone too is that we do get NFC. So if you do like to make mobile payments, for example, then you are able to do it here with the phone. In fact, that's pretty funny because the Surface Duo, which is like a $1,400 folding phone, does not have NFC but we are getting it here with the Revel 5G. And then finally, I did want to give a shout out to the software here on the device. Definitely a very good software experience. Things run nice and quick, and it pretty much is a stock variant of Android, which I'm definitely a big fan of. But these are my pros and cons about the T-Mobile Revel 5G. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, give it a thumbs up. But my name is Kevin, and I will see you in the next video.